Hi, my name is Jessica Suarez. I'm a self-thought multidisciplinary artist. I went to Redimage University. I studied marketing. I started learning how to draw since I was a kid. I remember I always chased off like storybooks and I always wanted to be like the best art student in my class. But like that didn't really work out. So I just used to do like art on the side as, as for a hobby. I started working. I didn't want to work as a marketer. So I had like a side passion for fashion. So I went into fashion instead of going into marketing. And because I could do it, it was easy. So I became like a creative director at Fashion House. I do like their fashion illustration. I marketed, well, I did a bit of marketing as well, but it wasn't full-time marketing. Then I just got up one day, I said, you know what? I think I'm tired of working. And then I decided to start art full-time. <music> So I've been working on this for a while, so I mean, it's all mumbled up and dirty. But then I use beads and I usually pour them. Sometimes I have to, I have to always go over the beads again because sometimes the, the beads don't stick in some places. I have to restick them again and then go over it again. But then let me show you how I do them. They're not as hard as they look. So most times I use top bun. For them, top, top bun is really it holds well, unlike the other gums, like you gums and stuff. Stop bun, once like you do like two coats, and there we go. This is like the first layer of my painting of the face. I still have to go over it again. This is like a rough sketch to see what the body will look like. I usually like to do my face last so i can have like a better reflection from the body so i'll know how i want the color of the face to be so this is how i do it people always usually think i just stick them on nah i do them this way i get to pour them like this do the beans waste not really they just tend to be a lot but they don't really get to waste because I still get to use them on other things but yeah this is how I get to apply them I didn't have any serious knowledge about art like I didn't have to go to art school or whatever I just knew whatever I knew I knew of me tracing off storybooks me tracing off books and I remember when I was little my auntie used to work in a bank and then she, every time they have their annual reports she used to bring home this carbon paper I think it was from there and then she used to bring like a lot and we didn't know what to use them for and then she, then she said oh you can always trace and then I just started so there was one time I was out of carbon paper and then my grandma said okay you know what let me teach you a chicken and she, she, she got granite oil and plain paper and then she poured granite oil on the paper and told me to let it dry and then it dried and it became transparent and I could trace. I get my inspiration from things around me. I follow a few people and then I, it took me a while to get my style. I knew I didn't want to be just a regular art. I wanted to be distinct. I wanted something that was people would see and be fascinated about and they'll just wait and see. So yeah, not having parallel knowledge. Yes, I learned from basically everywhere. I learned from the internet. I learned from looking at people and if I'm seeing something I'll try to study and see how can I do it to be mine or how can I tweak it to be my style a bit so yeah I get my expression basically from everywhere African 
women, hair. I like hair a lot. I'm not one that has hair, so I'm very fascinated by hair. So you see most of my artwork has to do with hair and faces, yeah. So I just knew that it had to be something, so I started developing like different styles. And I started studying like everywhere and saying, okay, does any, is anybody doing this style? It was like a journey. It wasn't just, it was from when I was little up to now. So it was from everywhere, African tribes, African patterns, how beautiful they were, and how I could incorporate them into my art. Just different things. And I knew that when I stopped working as a fashion designer, I knew I didn't want to leave fashion. So I'm like, okay, how would I merge both of them together? Well, like, do I want to do commercial art, like wearable art, or do I want to do... I'm like, okay, you know what? Wearable art is everywhere. So why don't I just do those wearable art in my artwork? So that's, that's where the Ankara Blitz came from. If you see my art, I always try to put some of them into my drawings. So yeah, it's just bits and pieces from everywhere. Painting is like my safe place. It's like where I get to be away from everybody. It's like, it's, it's my happy place. If I'm not painting, I'm either sleeping. So painting is where I find most of my strength and most of my happiness. So for me then, art was happy, sad. If I'm happy, I'm painting, I'm sad, I'm painting. So it depends on how I feel at the moment, that's how I want to paint at the moment. So it, my work tells my mood kind of sort of, yeah. So once my pencil hits my paper, once my pencil hits my canvas, every feeling I get goes. So it's more like a stress reliever for me. It's more like my pencil is like my sensei. Like once I'm, I hold my pencil, everything I'm feeling just disappears. It's like I'm under like a spell, it's like hypnotic for me. So yeah. I don't remember anything. I'm drawn into my painting. I don't even know when it's 3 a.m. in the morning. It's, it's, it's always a conscious effort for me to even remember that it's 3 a.m. So I have to sleep at 3 a.m. So painting like takes away all my days and time. The current phenomenon with my style and the ability for me to incorporate things into my art. Also the tricky part is people don't understand how I get to do things that I do. So that really makes me, that really ticks me, that really gets me. It, it fills my drive to want to create more and do more. It took me a while, but I knew I had to find this style. I knew I didn't want to have a realism. I could do it, but I knew I didn't want to do it. I knew I didn't want to be painting celebrities. I knew that was not it. I knew I just wanted to paint in marketing. I just knew that I needed to find something. So one day I was going through the internet and I saw about grande hairs, where you have like hairstyles that have like in different forms. I'm like, hmm, why don't I do something about this? And I remember I had this first picture, the way small bits, and I drew one, the first hair and her face. I'm like, okay, it was a step. I'm like, okay, I've drawn the face and the hair, what next? I knew I didn't want to paint her hair black. And then I started in patterns. I remember I, I, I took the first strips, and it didn't look bad, and I started and then that's how it grew. And it grew and it was me evolving. So it was a step, it wasn't like I just knew this what I wanted to do. Some of my works have messages, but most times the ones I, I paint are just strength of a woman, African tribes, how a woman has to embody like so much for her culture and how women are seen as a representation of the environment, their tribes, and what they stand for and what they represent. So I do it for the women. My major tools are pencils, papers, and markers. I find myself more entwined and more connected to pencils and markers than I am with brushes and paints on canvases, but on walls, they are like mine spirit and animal, I just go. Well, the challenges with I face for my work is shipping. Like, shipping takes most part of it. So when, I, when you went tend to charge a customer, they don't understand that. Getting these things here is not even easy. Like, I have, and getting like the right, all the art is expensive, down to the materials. It, it is not cheap. If you want good work, it is expensive to get good materials. For markers, 
Most places don't really sell markers like that because people don't really use them. So most, most ones you find uh, acrylic paints. So getting my markers here cost me like an arm and a leg. And then getting the good ones, they cost a lot. So yeah, those are my challenges. People don't understand that. It's not about the work itself. It's about the process, the materials used for the work, and of course, the time. The first time I got paid was for my friend. He had a house, and I'm like, okay, you know what? Do me a painting, and then tell me how much. I'm like, hmm, why would you? Till today, it's still in his house. I thought, I, when I see it, I'm like, that's, that's nasty, but I mean, he likes it. So it was a good feeling that somebody actually was willing to take a chance on me. Yeah. So I felt really good and I felt like, yeah, I was in the right place. And that was a big step for me. Sometimes my work, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Like, I don't have like a backup plan. When people ask me, how did, how did you come up with these colors? I don't even know. When I have like, okay, this week I want to do like five paintings or whatever or six, I draw all my all my faces down. I don't like to when I finish one painting I take a break and do another. So if I have have like a sequence of all the drawings I'm going to do, even if it's for a period of one month, I have everything laid down. So when I pick up one, I don't know what colours, I don't know how they'll turn out. I just sit and I start. So the magic about it is when it's done how they tend to turn out, how the colors tend to match, how the t colors tend to blend, it's what I do not understand how that happens. So people think I already have like a, pre like a plan to how the colors will match, but no. I just go over my head, I just go in my gut. So when my head tells me, points here, that's what I do. I can remember that wall downstairs. I don't even know how come I came about those colors. And then when it was done, the blend was beautiful. Like when I posted, people like, how did you come up with these colors? I do not know. I just go in my guts at that point in time. What I see myself in five to ten years, I want to be all over the world. I want to be mentoring girls. You don't have enough women having that success story. So yeah, I want to be part of those women on the lips of a lot of people around the world. I want to have my work in a lot of residences, in big houses, in big places. I want to be able to teach girls, mentor them, help them have like, like a big Jessica Suarez foundation, like a lot of things solely for art because we need more art, female artists. We need more female artists to bridge that gap of saying, okay, it's only been, you know, that's successful. We need a lot of female artists to be successful as well. Mm -hmm.